questions tonight for another police department. This time it's in San Bernardino County, California. Ten deputies have now been suspended and investigations underway into the savage beating of a suspect Thursday. All caught on camera. Erica Pitsy is here with that. Erica. And John, based on the video that is pretty graphic, the sheriff is calling the deputies' actions excessive. Meanwhile, the FBI has launched its own investigation to determine if the suspect's civil rights were violated. There you go. Here's a deputy chasing him. It started with a chase and ended with a brutal beating, caught on camera by local news station KNBC. Suspect being tased. Suspect being tased. In the video, you can see the suspect, Francis Pusak, fall off the horse. Seconds later, a sheriff's deputy fires his stun gun. That keeps Pusak down, but just as Pusak puts his hands behind his back, one of the deputies delivers a direct kick to the head. The two deputies beat the man repeatedly. 20 seconds later, 11 more deputies swarm the scene. The beating lasts for more than a minute. Pusak appears to be punched 37 times, kicked 17 times, and struck with a baton four times. Deputies say Pusak is a felon and a suspect in an identity theft case. They say they were serving a warrant at his house when he fled from deputies Thursday afternoon. First by car, then on foot, then on the back of a stolen horse. This is as bad, if not worse, than what they did to Rodney King. This was terrible. It kept going and going and going. Pusak's family says they want the deputies to go to prison. They beat the crap out of him, and now they're trying to do everything that they can to avoid get them being in any trouble. San Bernardino County Sheriff John McMahon promises a thorough investigation. I am disturbed and troubled by what I see in the video. It does not appear to be in line with our policies and procedures, at least a portion of it. The Sheriff's Department says Pusak is in a hospital recovering from his injuries. The video also drew a quick response from the American Civil Liberties Union saying the deputy's treatment of the suspect is, quote, deeply troubling. John. Erica, thank you. Joining us now is Vincent Hill, a private investigator and former police officer with the Nashville Police Department. Vincent, uh, first of all, just give me your reaction to what you've seen. Well, I think it's tragic and horrific, uh, and I think his attorney said it best, worse than the Rodney King. I think he took nine more kicks than Rodney King actually did in 1991. And the thing that's troubling about it, John, is you see the subject in the prone position, in the surrender position. He puts his hands behind his back, but yet he's tased and he's kicked in the head. You had two officers there. One could have been the cover officer, which is standard procedure. One could have been the contact officer to place handcuffs on him. A couple of things you mentioned of how they might have handled this differently. What else could they have done? Well, I, I think, you know, again, if, if you have those two officers handling the scene, you wouldn't need the other nine or ten officers there. It would have taken less than ten seconds to place handcuffs on this subject, you know, searching for weapons and do standard procedure. But the minute they cross the line is the minute they use more for, force necessary to effect the, the arrest which is what training calls for. Well, and if you do watch this video, if it goes back on a loop again, we'll see it. He falls off the horse, and he's behind a bush. You know, police can't see him. They've been chasing him for a long period of time. They're all, they've got the adrenaline going. Um, how does one pull back when you're a police officer from that? Human nature, your adrenaline is going to be sky high. Mm -hmm. But at some point, training kicks in. You're taught. Use the necessary force to effect the arrest. These officers went above and beyond that uh, and, you know, violated this man's rights. Uh, again, they beat him savagely, which was not called for. I think it was justified that all 10 were, were put on administrative yeah, I leave. Mean, you see some of these other officers who, at, at some period of time, it takes a number of officers to get there. Um, the, the final officers who come by begin to hit uh, this suspect as well. Explain that to me. I think that could have been some confusion on the other officer's part. Of course, they got there seconds later. I'm sure they were probably hearing commands like, quit resisting, quit resisting, which police officers are trained to, to say during a uh, takedown. So there's probably some confusion of whether the subject was resisting or whether he was not resisting. Uh, there was just so much confusion, so many people on top of this guy, that I don't think anyone knew what was going on. Vincent Hill. Vincent, thanks.